Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I'd like to talk to you in depth about the weapons of Infinite Warfare. If you want to see gameplay of every single weapon in the game, you can click the first link down there in the description. That's like a 13-14 minute video, pretty much just gameplay but no commentary or anything. This one I'm going to be doing a lot of talking because I finally got my voice back, finally over the cold, feeling better. The map you're seeing is throwback for the most part, where I'm screwing around and learning things. Not the most brilliant gameplay, but you will see some interesting things here. And I think the guns in Infinite Warfare feel Feel very balanced and fun and I want to use the word feel because unfortunately I don't have stats I don't have raw numbers uh, betas coming out balance can change and of course we don't want to do feels over reels we want reels over feels every time and the final product matters but as of right now the weapons feel balanced they feel good they feel fun to use it's kind of a popular thing to hate on infinite warfare or call of duty in general and positivity usually isn't what the COD audience wants but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you this aspect of the game feels very very good to me now variants can muck this up a lot. Unfortunately, we did not get to play with any of the variants or test them out, so I can't tell you how they're going to perform or how they're going to screw up the base balance, but the base balance seems very, very good. Most of the base weapons are four-shot kills, and they have Black Ops 2 and 3 style headshots, which is like 1.1 to maybe 1.2x multiplier. It's not very big, so it's like one less shot to kill. This means no more Call of Duty Ghosts melting people and near insta-deaths. Call of Duty Ghost had a lot of three-shot kill weapons, and it had like 1.5 to double damage headshots and crazy stuff like that. So you could kill people with two headshots and they would die very, very quickly. So there's very few three-shot kill weapons in the game. Most of the three-shot kill weapons very slow firing. Headshot damage isn't too much. There's a high caliber like attachment, so you can put that on there and kill people quickly, but it's not on every weapon. There's no goofy advanced warfare style reloading mechanics. I know when AW came out, it confused a lot of people because you could double tap X, or well, it was, we were playing on Xbox then, to uh, reload really quickly and throw your magazine away, but you would lose all the ammo. That's not present at all. It's just normal Call of Duty reloading. There is an interesting in-menu option, I don't know if this is going to be final or not, that allows you to turn on and off sprint reload canceling. So what a lot of people do, especially older COD players such as myself, will reload and then will sprint as soon as the bullets are in the magazine, even though the animation isn't done, because it'll cancel the reload and then you can shoot when you're done. There's an in-menu option to toggle this on and off. If you like it, you can have it on. If you hate it, if it's confusing, you can turn it off, which is really nice. And of note, the new Vector has two magazines for quick and full reload, which is kind of neat. This weapon's unique on its own. The other weapons won't be like that, but if you see the new Vector, I honest to God forget what it co it's called, but it looks just like the Vector. It literally has two magazines going into the weapon, so you can reload one of them very, very quickly, just if you need 20 bullets just instantly, or if you want to do a full reload to go up to 40, ma 40 rounds, it's a little bit slower, but it's a very neat idea. I thought it was very unique. I've never seen a gun like that in Call of Duty before, so that's kind of cool. When it comes to iron sights, most of the weapons have usable iron sights, but they're a little bit on the uglier side of things. I might be biased here because I tend not to like iron sights on my weapons. I always try to do with optics because they're so much better, and that's pretty much the same here. Optics are inherently better. The thermal and tracking type optics don't seem very strong. As a matter of fact, they seem almost useless in this game. I went for the more simple red dotty ACOG type things, and attachments are mostly normal for a COD game. It's kind of what you would expect. for grip, optics, stock, um, you can do FMJ to penetrate, you can do fast mags, extended mags, that sort of thing. There's a few of them that I know not all of you are going to be super happy about. Uh, a high caliber, it's got a different name, but it does the same thing. Bonus damage on headshots is coming back, long barrel, things like that. But they're all pretty normal, except energy weapons have a few slightly different attachments. There's a lot of analogous ones, like there's one that does uh, is, is like high caliber and long barrel for energy weapons too. But there's a few unique ones which we'll talk about in a little bit. And not all weapons have the same in-class attachments, which I thought was unique from a balancing perspective. So when it comes to assault rifles, not every assault rifle gives you the opportunity to put on high caliber. Not every submachine gun gives you the opportunity to put on rapid fire. Some of them are restricted from weapon to weapon, and I believe it was for balance reasons. A hot button topic in the community, and was always, is quickscoping. And as far as I'm aware, that is back in Infinite Warfare. Now, there have been press releases saying that quickscoping is going to be very hard to do and that the community is going to have issues with it. That's pretty much always the case. Like, they say that every single year, like, oh, quickscoping is going to be hard this year, and it never really is. And I had the 
I wouldn't say misfortune because he's a nice guy. The, the, the challenge of playing with Homage, and he's a very good, very high-end sniper. He had no issues whatsoever uh, quick scoping or at least fast sniping people. Sniper rifle's good, sniper rifle's powerful, no issues quick scoping. It's not going to be like Modern Warfare 3, so you don't have to get, you know, ha get triggered and have flashbacks to that. It's not that much different than Call of Duty Ghosts or Black Ops 3, to be honest. As far as I could tell, there was some bit of aim assist on the sniper rifle, so it's not like Black Ops 3. But ADS time seems a little bit slow, kind of like Call of Duty Ghosts. So do expect to be able to quickscope people and do expect to be able to be quickscoped, if that is the correct English grammatification of that sentence. Next big topic is energy weapons. And I think I've talked about this in a few other videos, but I kind of wanted to go in detail here. Energy weapons function just like normal weapons for the most part, but with different animations. When you think about energy weapons in Call of Duty, most of you are thinking about Advanced Warfare or Black Ops 3. In Advanced Warfare, they had these battery packs and they would fire black, brightly colored lasers and overheat and you had to cool them down. And the lasers had weird properties like they had low recoil, but they had no penetration and they couldn't hurt kill streaks. And then in Black Ops 3, we had these energy weapons that fired like big plasma balls, like they were projectiles. So you had to lead your targets and stuff like that. They're not like this at all in Infinite Warfare. And Infinite Warfare has by far the best energy weapons because they're literally just like normal guns. They have the same type of hit scan, the same type of bullet. They're not projectiles. They can penetrate through walls and objects just like normal guns. You don't have to lead your shots. They don't overheat. They don't do anything funny. Uh, it's pretty normal. Like even when you burn your entire magazine, or I would, it's actually a battery if I'm not mistaken, instead of like letting it cool off and blowing on it like an AW, you literally literally just take the battery pack out, throw it away, and slap in a new battery like it's a magazine, which is really cool. One of the other unique things they do, which I, I hope pans out really well in the final game, and I hope it doesn't become a balance issue, is that the energy weapons will recharge directly into your magazine, and if your magazine is charged they'll full, they'll recharge directly into your stock. It's kind of like the IMR from Advanced Warfare, if you remember it would slowly print and regenerate ammo into its reserve capacity, except this time it'll just slowly recharge into your magazine. So let's say you've got an energy weapon that has like 30 rounds in it, and you shoot 20 of them. Well, as you you walk around it'll slowly charge and it'll go you know it'll it'll add one and add one and add one and after a few seconds you might get half of your magazine back which is really cool there is an attachment which allows faster recharging so that they just come back faster now it doesn't recharge when you're shooting it's not like you can hold down the trigger and get extra shots it's when you're not shooting them it's when it does this and it allows you to recharge even when stored the base weapon when you hit uh, I guess it's gonna be triangle on PlayStation and put it in your uh, in your reserve or your secondary it will not recharge while you've got it just in your back pocket unless you have this attachment in which case it will recharge. I think it's a good mechanic. I'm kind of glad that they have this by default because it's really cool. It's a really un unique idea. It's not something that we've seen in Call of Duty. Especially if you're good at conserving your ammo, you can kill somebody in a couple of shots and you don't even need to bother reloading because it'll recharge slowly in a little bit. So if you time it just right, it's really, really neat. Hopefully it doesn't become a balance issue, but I totally understand if it can. I could definitely see it being taken advantage of in some game modes. And next up, let's talk about hybrid weapons. For me, hybrid weapons were by far the most fun, but they can yield balance issues. Uh, the ones that I got to play with were a, so I think you're actually going to see it in this gameplay, a submachine gun that can shoot slowly and very accurately, almost like a peacekeeper or like an assault rifle. Or you can just pull it in and put it into this crazy like Black Ops 2 Scorpion spray and pray all over the place mode like it's like PM93 from MW3 I think it was that old crazy gun. Or there's an assault rifle that literally rips a half and breaks apart into two submachine guns which is really really cool. That was probably my most favorite weapon in the game. It's like a bad assault rifle and the akimbos aren't amazing but the versatility that it offers is very very useful. And of course the sniper assault rifle hybrid that a lot of you have seen. The sniper is kind of like a Dragonov, like a DMR, like you got to get headshots to one shot kill. And the assault rifle is not anything too amazing. I guess it's kind of like the Maverick from Ghost. But it's there, and it's, you know, it's it's an option, right? If you're a sniper, you can snipe and run and gun a little bit too. And some of the variants have give you different... Um, hybrid modes. They change some of the weapons into burst or semi 
or they allow you to charge and like dump your whole magazine in one shot or something crazy like that. So those will change things up. But right now, hybrid weapons are immensely satisfying to use, very fun to play. They add a new dynamic to the game, which is really cool. And I really, really hope that they are not considered OP. I hope they don't become a balance issue, but I definitely can understand if they do, because even if, let's say, the case of the AR that breaks into SMGs, it's not a good AR, and the SMGs it breaks into aren't exactly amazing, but the overall level of versatility is extremely, extremely high. It causes you to not have to specialize as much, so if that can be extrapolated to other weapons, or even in this weapon, it could definitely be an issue. So we gotta pay attention. We as a community have to not jump to conclusions, but do be vigilant. And finally, variants. The variants, I think, are going to be really crazy, and I think the base variants, just the regular weapons, have really good balance. They're fun to use. They're not an issue. But the variants are really, 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 really different. They'll change the weapons from semi to burst to full auto to something different from regular to energy or back again. Or they'll have double damage but shoots half as fast. Um, burns half your magazine in one clip. Double your magazine but you can't reload. Bonus damage for dick shots. All sorts of really crazy stuff. Nukes on the guns, which is uh, baffling to tell you the truth, but... I really hope the variants are well done, and I really don't hope I really hope they don't muck up the good weapon balance that we have right now. Guys, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.